bother you. All right, here we go. So the bar was so high after the first frozen. What were the biggest challenges for you? My question is, c'était tellement un succès phénoménal autour du monde, le premier en neige. C'était quoi les challenges avec ce deuxième? Jennifer? Well, I think the, the challenge is always story. Um, we, we, we joke, we naively um, decided we want to stay in this world together. We miss them. We had a lot of questions. I think we finished the first knock thinking there was more story to tell and then uncovering it. Um, we did come to our end pretty soon, so that helped us. Uh, we knew where we wanted to go. But um, every day, the story to tell, the right story to tell, a story that evolves, that pushes us to new places, that, that also lines up with every character. Um, we were working the story probably until end of August. Yeah, uh, we blew past our deadline. Thank you, Peter, for letting us do that, for getting us on time. But it, it, it certainly, I, uh, uh, we didn't know what we were getting into, thankfully, <laughs> but we're glad we did it. Chris, how about you? Well, the challenge, same, the story is always the, the biggest challenge. Um, so we start there. We did have technical challenges, too, and that was once we, we started with the, just a wind spirit, and that was the first challenge. That was tough enough. And then, of course, we had this water horse, which is incredibly uh, difficult to do. We added earth giants and then the fire spirit. So all of those combined, that was another challenge. Our artists are incredible, though, our team. Um, we would always throw these challenges at them, and they would, they would not only say yes, but they would come back to us with something even more spectacular than we could have imagined. Peter, what was that like for you as a producer? Were you tearing your hair out behind you by August? <laughs> well, I like the theme of the movie, which a lot, is a lot about change. I think the story kept changing and evolving. The one thing that doesn't change is our release date. So uh, uh, working with the crew um, to get the full potential of the movie up on the screen, but what was so positive is the crew started to respond to the story that Chris and Jen were telling, and that inspired them. And so amazing things happen when, again, you're inspired by the story you're telling. Est-ce que vous avez vos propres questions? Okay, hello everybody. Bonjour. Uh, why six years? Why it takes such a long time? Pourquoi ça prend autant de temps? Pourquoi six ans? Uh, quand avez-vous décidé exactement de, de faire une nouvelle crème de neige? When did you exactly decide to, to make a film? Um, it, it was a good year or more after the movie came out when Chris and Jen were inspired by seeing the characters on the short we were working on move again. Um, but the process of animation, it's, it, uh, it's about evolution of the story. Uh, uh, that takes time, about finding the story. And then actual animation, production of animation, takes a good year and a half to two years. So. Uh, uh, to us, the time went by very quickly. Bonjour. Um, J'aimerais savoir comment vous avez réfléchi au personnage d'Olaf et comment vous avez fait pour trouver ce, cet équilibre uh, pas évident à atteindre entre d'un côté on fait un personnage qui a lu ses enfants et en même temps un grand sage métaphysique. Okay, so she's asking really specifically about Olaf. What was the key to finding this balance between this funny little child pleaser and this sort of metaphysical wise man? Well, we, we like to joke that um, Olaf is pure snow, but pure white. That's the innocence, this pure snow, like fresh fallen snow. But he's also got the word man after him. And so the, the juxtaposition of those two things were sort of the, the recipe for Olaf. Um, imbued with the love of these two girls when they were little, their innocent love. So he is this lovely combination of, of, um, of uh, uh, a young child with the vocabulary of a man, not always the understanding, but I think watching him grow in this a bit in, um, in a way that children, I think facing change is very difficult for kids especially and for all of us, but looking at it through the eyes of Olaf could be inspiring uh, but also true to those those feelings you have as a child. So we love that's part of what makes Olaf Olaf is that duality. Were you worried at all about going to the dark places that that he goes with Olaf in this film? Without obviously saying too much. No, not really. I mean, we're always inspired by um, Walt Disney's films, you know, and his legacy, and you know, with Snow White, Pinocchio, and Bambi, and a lot of the films, he goes to a dark place. He goes to the dark place that fairy tales go to. So we're inspired by that. And, and you know, uh, personally, I, 
I know that films like Pinocchio, they help me through certain challenges. Uh, if I could see and relate to the characters going through these, uh, what are almost insurmountable challenges, but come out in the end uh, much stronger, but also with a happily ever after. So I was always inspired by those. We all are inspired by those. And, and we know that, that children can handle quite a bit. Um, we never talk down to the kids. And so even though, like you said, you may go to what look like a, a darker place, we know it's actually better for the film overall. Oui, question. Uh, oui, le micro ici, puis après. Euh, bonjour, euh, je voulais savoir si l'idée d'une suite était déjà dès le départ réfléchie ou elle n'est arrivée que quand il y a eu le succès de La Reine des Neiges 1. Ok, so did you know even before the first president came out that you would want perhaps to do a sequel or did you see the success of the first president and say ok, we're going to do a sequel? We, we did not um, at all think about a sequel. We, uh, we were just trying to crack that story. Um, and we did end it really feeling that it was a happily ever after. Uh, in a funny way, we get this question a lot of what is the success, and it, in a way, that, that could have been a deterrent. Uh, we really couldn't look at it that way, or I think we'd make it for the wrong reasons, and we weren't pressured to do so. We were actually starting to develop something else, and it was us falling, doing that little short. We fell back in love, and it was us realizing that we hadn't completed this story. Um, now to me it feels complete, so, but I thought the first one did, but it, 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 it really was us feeling Elsa was just accepted for her powers, but why did, why did she have them? What, is all, what are all of them meant to do with life? How does change come for you? Um, and how do you cope with change? Looking at fear versus love in terms of change. Once we, what, we started there, we couldn't, we couldn't get out. We were hooked. So it really had to go that way, I think, um, if anything, the most important thing for us was to put the pressure outside of the room, because if we carried it, we would make the wrong decisions for them. At least, um, we don't know, we didn't know if the world would respond to the first one, we can't know with the second, but if what we, we built the first one from these characters and what their journey was out, um, we did the music that way too, and we just promised each other we'd do it that way the second time, uh, and we did. And, um, and, and in a way, it's, it's as we're going out to the world right now, it's hitting us all over again about the first film because we've been, we've been so focused on the story. Jennifer, you just said that you feel now with this one, the story's complete. Are you thinking about a third? Could it go down the road? Is it going to be a third that's for me. Uh, no, I mean, I really felt like we, we wanted to, we wanted to feel like a complete journey. Um, Ask us in a year if we make some bigger discovery. Uh, you, it takes a lot to do these films. It takes everything you have. You have to see it. You have to feel it. And if you can't, you can't do it. And so for us, it, I love the last frame of this film. We've had that for a long time. I love the feeling it gives me. And um, I literally have not personally thought past that moment. So. Voilà, donc une autre question, c'est qui une compagnie Bonjour. Euh, le succès de la chanson et de la musique du premier a à peine dépassé le film. Euh, Est-ce que ça a obligé à concevoir les chansons et les musiques du deuxième de façon plus autonome, de façon plus indépendante, de façon différente He's saying the music from the first film almost, the success almost surpassed the film itself. Did you feel when you were making the music for the second one, it was more of its own autonomous thing, looking at it as it having its life of its own, or was it always an integral part of what you were making? Well, the, the, the music and the story, you know, they have to be crafted together. So they are, they are a very integral part of the story. The one thing we did differently this time is look at Frozen 2 as sort of act two of uh, a stage musical. So where uh, act one is usually the setup of characters and the characters wants. This time act two, you can go a little deeper. You can go more emotional with some of the songs. Of course, we still have a lot of the fun songs in there too. But that could differentiate between the, the sort of the, the songs from Frozen 1 and the songs from Frozen 2 and give it its own feel. It's just about the songs. Was it important to you this time to make sure each or almost each character, apart from Sven, who sort of does, gets their own song, their own solo? My question is, it was important for them that this time, each person had their own solo? Well, what's interesting is um, you have it really. The, the song has to come from the story, and in Frozen 1, we wanted so much for Kristoff to have a real song, and just the story didn't lend itself. He wasn't, he wasn't, 
he was so reserved and he was not, he was so withholding, he would not sing like that. The most you could get was affection with his reindeer. But, uh, <laughs> but you go, in this one, there were other characters who wanted to have songs. Um, with Matthias was one we were um, thinking about uh, the North Alder folk in, in, in a different way. But emotionally, you, it's those moments that sing that tell you, and we ended up here. The delicious thing was that it really did lend itself for a Kristoff song. Um, and when I felt like I'd been waiting for uh, to get in that man's head, I was really great to get inside and you know what was really what it, what it looks like an 80s ballad in there. Um, but it really has to come from story, and you in it that hard moment when you realize a song isn't going to happen for a character, but you have to accept it because it's right for the story. One of the powerful songs too that was that we from the beginning had talked about was a song for Anna, and that comes much later in the film. And one of the things we could talk about with Anna is that Anna is the character, she seems very optimistic and fun and happy most of the time. Uh, but what we found out, sort of analyzing her, is that she's actually a character that chooses to be optimistic. She, you know, things may not be, you know, so sunny all the time for her, but she wakes up in the morning and makes the choice to be optimistic. And we thought, well, what, how can we show that with a song? you know, really take on to a place where she's really struggling and quite a low place where then she chooses, she makes a choice to take the next the next step and keep keep moving. Um, it was very powerful, very moving for us. Une autre question qui a le tour Paris. Merci pour ce film là. Euh, J'ai euh, le sentiment que le film euh, était beaucoup plus long que, que ce qu'on a vu. Et je veux savoir si, euh, si vous voulez Long on the songs are real. Uh, dance, uh, dance. Uh, okay. Dance. Yeah, he said he felt this film was much longer, not in the negative sense, but in like the denseness of the story. And he's wondering if there might be perhaps other short films or other things qui vont quoi, qui vont un peu résoudre d'autres. Oui. But that might uh, kind of talk about other things that we kind of get a little glimpse of in, in this movie that aren't developed perhaps 100%. Well, we, uh, uh, we, we always say never say never. I think one of the things we're having fun with is um, really uh, growing the talent in the studio and finding opportunities for them to play with our characters in different ways. Uh, so we will see, we will see, perhaps. What's that like when you talk about the talent in the studio? I mean, are the actors very involved in the creation of these characters at all? My question is, sur les acteurs qui font des voix, est-ce qu'ils sont vraiment impliqués? Est-ce qu'ils peuvent aussi improviser, développer, can they improvise? We work very closely with the actors, particularly the actors who know these characters so well from the first. Um, they really helped uh, uh, develop along with us the story. But when we say the studio, we also mean the crew. Um, uh, uh, it's been six years since we've worked with them. They've gotten stronger, technology's gotten stronger, and they brought so much to the process as well. In many cases, they inspired us, they surprised us, uh, what they were capable of as well. We have animators uh, who know these characters as well as us. Um, we, I mean, it, what's a very interesting thing about Disney animation in particular, it's hundreds of artists together from film to film. We get to know each other, we see each other's strengths, but they are artists. So, uh, you know, some draw, some, some animate, some technical, but it, that combination, um, you, and you'll see they, people will rise up with a vision that is just incredible and you want to support it. And that's, that's something that Walt started and that's something that we continue to do. And I see. Euh, hier soir sur scène, le mot valeur a été prononcé plusieurs fois, notamment celui de courage. Est-ce que chez Disney, alors, on parle beaucoup de collapsologie Vous sentez euh, ici une mission d'envoyer, de, avec votre force de frappe, euh, beaucoup d'optimisme, notamment aux enfants Et comment vous avez vu l'idée de la mémoire de l'eau Parce que est-ce que cet optimisme repasse par une reconnexion, à, par exemple, aux, aux éléments, aux, dans les questions dans le film, et à des choses finalement relativement essentielles so she was saying last night on stage, you were talking a lot about the values, talking about the importance of courage. Et si j'ai bien compris les questions, c'est par rapport vraiment la mémoire de l'eau, cette notion, ou juste les valeurs en tout? Non, la reconnexion aux éléments. Okay. Oh yeah. So uh, the val values, courage, all of that being connected to the elements, um, like this idea of the memory of water and all of that. If you could speak a little bit about that. Yeah, I think um, one of the things interesting for us is as we started to build the, this and say where we did when. Where did her powers come from and why? We didn't have the answer to that when we started Frozen 2. Um, but one of the we loved was her magic is connected to nature. We were uh, wanted to keep ourselves in the realm of, of, of uh, Scandinavian magic because that's where we started. Because 
magic could be anything. And as we were doing research into Old Norse myths and to folklore, the elements started to come to life. But we really realized Elsa's magic is of water. Water is fundamental to life. There's something in there. And then we read uh, this scientific uh, statement that water has memory, and in the sense that all the water we have is always ever ha all we've ever had. It passes through all of us. It absorbs. It dissolves. So, and you can you could dig down the deep in a glacier and learn about our past. And then we stood on a glacier and we imagined being Elsa and this feeling that she had access to memories, to us, and it just evolved from there. So, what's so interesting is we uh, all the parts of nature and all of the things about the land really came from her. Uh, our our discoveries, I should say, came from Elsa. Uh, and, and, and we discovered it with her, which was really uh, emotional for us as well. Une autre question, voilà, ici. Oui, pour continuer un peu sur le thème de la nature, euh, la nature et l'environnement est vraiment au cœur de votre film. Est-ce que c'était vraiment... Ah, pardon. Ah, non. Non, je suis là. Ah, voilà, pardon, je vais aller. <rire> ok, je vais. Euh, donc, pour continuer, est-ce que la nature et l'environnement, c'était vraiment une volonté particulière de le mettre au centre de l'histoire euh, Sachant qu'aujourd'hui, c'est un thème qui est important et aussi euh, sûrement pour éduquer les enfants et les consciences. Obviously, nature is a very hot topic in today's world. Was it a real choice to focus on nature in particular because of the global context, or particularly speaking to children? Well, the, the idea actually came from Elsa once again. It was, it was um, really driven by the story and by Elsa, and Elsa's connection with her, her own powers and connection to nature because of that. And sometimes we even thought Elsa was sort of half nature already. So uh, it was all about that and her connecting with all the different elements and how she would feel about that. Um, the, the one thing we, uh, that I think is fantastic is that young people are seeing the film and they are seeing nature in all its kind of wonderful glory. And, and for me, I, you know, there'd be nothing more special for me to see a young person walking through the forest someday and then sort of talking to the wind as a character and being embraced by the wind or any of the other elements, but showing that sort of wonderful respect and connection with nature. Jennifer, you have a daughter. What kind of effect did she have on this story in your work? My question, though, she had her own daughter. I asked her what was the influence of her daughter on the film. My daughter was uh, very much an inspiration for Anna in that um, a lot of us relate to Anna, but the uh, sort of act before you think, being fearless, um, sometimes too fearless, uh, but not perfect, you know, and, and um, wearing your heart on your sleeve, and, and those things that uh, we often lose in life, but, but can be quite a strength, and I think that was very inspiring. And, and for all of us, we talked about our families a lot, our children, our children all ins very much inspired this story. Um, you mentioned sort of nature. For us, this was a film about growing up and about facing the real world and your role in the world, and that affects, you have a responsibility to participate and that includes your, your connection to, you know, to nature, to your community, to each other, to your family. And putting all, uh, seeing our characters go through that, um, coping with change is difficult, and growing up is difficult. And that was stuff we've watched with our children, talked a lot about, and wanted to say, let's do a film that says, I know it's scary to step into the unknown. I know there's so many things going on in the world right now that's overwhelming, but you have a role to play, and you can accomplish a lot uh, even by walking through those fears. And so that was definitely, it was daily conversations about all our children in this case. Dernière question. Ok, une dernière petite question. Oui, allez-y. Il y a juste ici. Le film ressemble beaucoup, on ressent beaucoup dans l'ambiance de Pocahontas. Est-ce que vous êtes inspiré du film de 95 he says he feels there's lots of similar themes, that it feels similar to Pocahontas. So, uh, was that something that you thought about? Did you find anything of that at all, those things? No, not really. I mean, I, I can see how you might feel away, especially with uh, sort of the, the wind and the oh, yeah. leaves and the, the autumn. I can, I can see how you could see that. I, did, I worked on Pocahontas, I was an hand on Pocahontas, <laughs> and I didn't really think about it very much. Uh, Anna and Elsa and the frozen world is so different than that. Um, and we really just grounded ourselves in those characters, and that's what really sort of kept us going. Thank you so much to all three of you. Please question.